In this video, I will talk to you about how we can actually use the GitHub repository of the Java project we are working on to help in collaborative distributed software development, which is typically needed when you want to develop software as part of a team with multiple persons. So I have already shown before how we can synchronize uh, Java code that has been cloned from a repository and how we can make changes to that repository. Uh, here we see the Git instructions for updating your local copy of the project or for pushing uh, your changes to the GitHub repository, uh, which is shared with your team members. The other way is to go through the context sensitive menu of the project where we can see what are the changes we have made currently and which ones need to be pushed. So for example, in, in this example, I have taken an existing class, which was a test class where I have added some extra assertion. So I've modified a bit of code uh, for unit testing. I will commit this to my local copy. I will put myself, my name here so that people can see who has made a change. I will add a sign off. I will commit the changes. Whenever I commit, uh, the tool also proposes to do a code review. In this case, there is no errors and one warning font. So I'm not going to review the changes. I'm directly committing it uh, to the repository. Okay, so now I have one file committed. Uh, remember, this is just a local commit. Uh, I still didn't push this to the GitHub repository. Uh, so to actually make this change available to everyone, I have to push the changes to the master to the origin, which is on GitHub. So I will push the changes that I have just committed locally. Okay. And now uh, I can go uh, outside of my IntelliJ environment and I can actually go to the web browser in which I have opened the GitHub repository. So one minute ago, I just uh, committed a change. Uh, here we can see uh, the fact that we are doing some continuous integration. So I'll click on it. Uh, so currently, this is the, the change that I have committed. And we can see that there is continuous integration where actually on the GitHub repository itself, we are building the system with Maven to see if there is not any compilation errors. If there would be any, then the system would fail. So this uh, automatic compilation is integrated as part of the workflow so that we know that we cannot commit any changes that are uh, that would lead to a breaking system. So let me now go over this, this view of the GitHub repository and show you a little bit about everything that is uh, relevant here. Uh, so here we can see we always have access to the latest version of the code, where we see all of the code in its different folders, uh, different subfolders, uh, the same structure as in our IntelliJ environment. We can actually uh, see the history well in different ways. For example, we can look at all of the commits that have been made by clicking on the commit button. And here we can see the evolution of the project over time in terms of commits. So the project started on the 5th of January uh, with three commits. And then almost every day there has been a couple of or many more commits that have been going on. In this case, you will see mostly me as a contributor. But from time to time, occasionally, there has been someone else involved for example, uh, here we can see Gauvin that has also made some changes to the code uh, three days ago. We also see another contributor, which is uh, Codacy Badger. That's uh, basically some integration of an automatic code analysis tool that I have added as well to the repository to check for the quality of the code every time a commit is being made. Actually, what we can also see in this repository uh, here, I have added uh, two badges to the project on GitHub. Uh, and actually, these badges are just a way to link the project to external services that check for code quality. I have used uh, two external tools. 
for checking the quality of the code and these are linked to the github repository and whenever any update is done in the github repository uh, these external tools will be checking for code quality and the overall results of the checking are just reported visually using what is called a batch. So here we have a quality 9 out of 10, and here we have a code quality uh, B. Uh, if you want to actually see the analysis, this code quality analysis, it suffices to go to those repositories by just clicking on the badges. So the first one, Better Code, uh, this is by a tool which is called Better Code Hub. Uh, I will sign in so that you can see the latest quality analysis for my given project. Okay, and then I have to select the corresponding repository, which is this one. It's Calculator Cucumber. Um, here we see the overall rating, uh, and then we can also see, actually, so we have 9 out of 10, because this tool basically does a check for 10 different types of quality analysis. I have a green light for 9 out of them. So for example, do I write short units of code? Yes. Uh, simple units of code? Yes. Uh, no code duplication? Okay. Uh, are my unit interfaces small? Yes. Uh, do I have a good separation of concerns in different modules? Yes. Uh, I have loose coupling of architectural components. I have a small code base, I have automated tests, and I have clean code. The only thing where it's shown as a little bit more problematic is this one, keep architecture components uh, imbalanced. So there I have a slightly less quality. You should have somewhere, ideally, between 2 and 12 components in your project. And in this case, it's true, I only have one single package that's being used, so I didn't modularize enough. For me, this particular smell is not relevant currently because I have so little code that it's not yet relevant. But when my project is starting to grow, I will have to consider uh, decomposing my code into different modules or different packages to have a better architectural restructuring of my code into, into different components. We can also look in more details, but sometimes you can go in a little bit details. For example, we see, okay, I have a class it's called operation.string. This might be something where potentially in the future there might be things going wrong uh, because it's already uh, 17 lines of code. So this is one of the more complex lines of code. This is somewhere in the orange range, but in terms of code complexity, almost all methods in my code are very small. So I have overall a very uh, good uh, division of my code into very short units of code, very short methods. So now let me go to the, the other uh, quality analysis tool that I have integrated currently. There is many other co code quality analysis tools that you could integrate in a similar way. So these are just two examples. So here, this code quality, uh, this is uh, using the code, the code C tool. So if I click on this, I will open the window here where we can see an analysis of our project. In this case, it says it has code quality B. The maximum is A. The, min, the, the worst case is, I think, E. We see it's still green, so it's okay. For detecting code duplication, I have 0% of code duplication. So from this point of view, there has never been any code duplication, so that's perfect. And it's you can also see the evolution over time. For complexity point of view, so complex methods, too long methods, uh, also, this is not the case, 0% of complexity over time. Uh, this is probably also due to the fact that it's still a very simple project. Coverage, this is do for doing coverage analysis, but this has not been configured yet in the tool. Uh, issues, uh, this is any type of issues of different uh, styles. Uh, so here we can see the, ty the ty types of issues that are being analyzed. We can have issues like unused code, compatibility issues, performance problems, security problems, and problems with coding style. We can also see how the number of issues is evolving over time. In this case, we can see that the percentage of issues, it appears to be going down slightly, and there is an, a decreasing trend. We can also go in details, for example, by looking at what are the code style issues that are being reported. I'm opening it here. And here you will see uh, lots of different code style issues which are being run. Uh, in this case, most of the code style issues are actually due to uh, incorrect way of using spacing in the, 
enumerations in the readme file. So this is not actually in the code itself, it's just in the documentation of the readme file. So actually I don't really care about this. Here we see a typical uh, case. So for example, here in this class, I'm using a hash map that is not uh, being used. So this seems to be a problem. Let me just go uh, to look into the code to see if this is really an issue. So I will check here. Yes, indeed. Uh, also in the IntelliJ code, I see that it's put in gray, which means it's not really used. So in principle, I could just remove this import statement here. And in that case, if I'm going to recompile my code, let me just recompile my code with Maven to see if everything will still compiles correctly, which uh, there is no errors. Let me also just test it to see if I can still uh, run all my tests without any errors. Okay, still build success. Let me just also commit this change directly to the repository. So removed and used import. And I will commit the change. And I will push the change to the GitHub repository. And now I go to the GitHub repository again. Okay, I will rerun this analysis again later on to show you that this style issue has been removed. Uh, uh, it's still computing in the background, so I cannot show it immediately. Uh, this is about ex this explicit scoping because I put uh, methods at, at with package visibility rather than public, private, protected. I'm not, I don't want to fix that issue. For me, that's okay. This is another one. This is actually a kind of false negative because uh, the tool thinks that I'm importing some class that I didn't really use, but it's not true. I do use it. This is uh, needed for JUnit 5. So it incorrectly detects this as a problem. So these are the only issues though. So almost, I almost have no uh, code issues that are analyzed by this particular tool. That's because I have really taken care to reduce as much cost issues as possible. We can also see the history over time in terms of commits. So here we see all of the commits on the repository. For example, here the, the, the last change I made in my divides class to remove the unused import, we, should, we see that it has now incorporated it. And uh, because it gave rise to two issues, these two issues has, have been fixed now, uh, which means that if I go back to the dashboard, I will have a reduction in the number of issues with 2%. And here you can actually see the history over time. So sometimes issues get fixed, like here lots of issues fixed in the readme file. Sometimes issues get added. So there we can globally see at which point do we have an increase in quality or a redu reduction in quality at the commit level. So let me now go back uh, to GitHub to explain you about the other concepts. So what can we rem remember here? Uh, two things, whenever commits are being made to the GitHub repository, there is an automatic quality analysis going on by external tools. On top of this, there is also an automatic compilation going on uh, using so-called GitHub actions. I can also show this, this is the action button here. So there we see there is this automatic workflow that I have um, added to the repository, which is which, is, which a workflow that I have called Java Continuous Integration with Maven, uh, which is basically I'm running Maven on the GitHub repository every time there is a new commit. And there we can see whenever it's successful, it will be green. So for all of the commits that I have made lately, it's okay. Sometimes it might be that some uh, committed with change breaks something. For example, here we see that there was uh, some breakage. In that case, it will be shown in red. This is something that should be avoided. In that case, your commit will not be accepted.